Welcome back to the Copywriters Podcast with your host, the world's greatest copywriting coach, David Garfinkel. David, how are you doing today? Nathan, I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. And I'm also a little intimidated by the show notes. I saw the title of this week's episode. Maybe I'm not yeah. quite as fantastic as I thought. Well, Actually, I'm going to put you in a better place if you just listen closely and follow all instructions to the letter. <laughs> um, all right. So here we go. Uh, the R word is popping up a lot these days. That word is recession, of course. And there's a good reason everyone's talking about it. Prices are going crazy. It seems like everything's doubled in the last few months. And if unemployment weren't so low, it would be a slam dunk and everyone would say, we're in a recession. This is important for copywriters and entrepreneurs because there are specific strategies you can use to stay afloat and even grow your business in a recession. We'll talk about them today. Are you skeptical that anything could work in a recession? A Forbes magazine article says that $7 billion family fortunes trace back to getting started during the Great Depression which is worse than a recession. So it's possible to do well when the economy is in the tank. Now, some experts I've seen on TV say, we're not in a recession yet. A really bright guy on the left says we're pretty close. And just as bright a guy on the right says, there's a very good chance we'll go into a recession soon. I don't agree with either of them. I think we're not going into recession, at least until after the elections in November. I think the politicians who have the most to gain from no recession will make sure we stall it until they get reelected. But I've been wrong about the economy before. So even against my own predictions, I think it's a good idea to know what to do now so that when things start to look really bleak, you'll have a plan you can go to. Because sooner or later, there's going to be one. And that's not just me talking. That's history talking. We've had five major recessions since I've had a job or been in my own business. And eventually, we're headed for another one. The best news of all is we'll talk today about ideas that will work great even when you're not in a recession and work even better once we are just like something else that always works great, no matter what. Copy is powerful. You're responsible for how you use what you hear on this podcast, and most of the time, common sense is all you need. But if you make extreme claims, and or if you're writing copy for offers in highly regulated industries like health, finance, and business opportunity, you may wanna get a legal review after you write and before you start using your copy. My larger clients do this all the time. Okay, so let's start by figuring out what a recession is. It's a scary word, and it's easy to think that it means the economy rolls to a dead stop or has collapsed completely, game over, economic Armageddon. And that's very dramatic. But in truth, that's not what a recession is. A recession is when the economy slows down. Keep that in mind as we go through this. Yes, there are problems. There are even some human tragedies, sometimes a lot of them, but that doesn't mean the economy has up and gone to another planet. No, when there's a recession, that means the economy has slowed down. Another thing to remember, a recession doesn't affect everyone the same way. Let's say there's a business where 10 employees of the business happen to also be your customers. Five of them get laid off. The other five stay on at the same salary they had before other people started getting laid off. The five people who are laid off are a lot less likely to buy from you in most cases than the five people who still get paychecks on a regular basis. One customer group has suddenly become two very different customer groups. So even in the same neighborhood, not all people are the same when it comes to what kind of customer they'd be in a recession. What's going on in the economy and specifically in your target market is very important and you need to pay attention to it and keep tabs on it. 
But there's something far more important, and that's your mindset. Now, if you're skeptical about mindset, I understand. There's a huge industry out there that says if you're just like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, you tap your red shoes together three times and repeat a magic phrase over and over, then simply all you have to do is that, and you will live a rich and satisfying life. I never got the red shoes myself, but from what I've observed and experienced, it doesn't exactly work that way. A positive mental attitude is definitely important, but it's hardly enough. The mindset I'm talking about is much more real world. First of all, it's a perspective. Well, you look at things, expecting that you'll be successful, but knowing that it's not always easy and you may have to try more than one path to get the result you're looking for. But it's more than that. The mindset I'm talking about involves your hands, your mouth, your ears. Your hands, what you do. Your mouth, what you say. And your ears, how you listen. It's what you focus on. And where you don't obsess, too. It has to do with how you use your mind to run your day throughout the week. A bias in favor of action and replacing perfectionism with repeated efforts and adjustments, especially if something doesn't work out the first time. That's as least as important as any marketing or copywriting moves you make during recession. Tying this back to us copywriters, marketers, the one thing that I do want to say is during these types of times when everybody's tightening their wallets and uh, less likely to pull out their credit cards for things that aren't super important, a lot of times the knee-jerk reaction of a business owner might be to cut advertising because it's not working as well as it was when the economy was booming. We're not seeing the same returns. There's something wrong with the ads. We need to cut the advertising. But, and this has been my experience with myself and multiple businesses, cutting advertising in the middle of a recession is the worst thing you can do. It's when advertising is the most important because as soon as you stop reminding people and as soon as you stop calling people to action, that dries up, that well of money dries up. So when this type of stuff hits, a lot of times the first response is, well, let's get rid of the advertising that isn't working. And the first response should be, let's figure out how we can make the advertising more effective. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. And, and we'll get into some strategies along those lines in a couple minutes. Um, but first of all, I'd like to go over a few things not to do during recession which I've seen people do when the economy hits rocky shores. It's a natural reaction to freeze in fear, to become mentally paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And people use their creativity to develop truly stunning rationalizations for this deer in the headlights approach. They say things like, oh, I'm, I'm waiting out the storm. I look at freezing differently and yes, critically. I call it participating in the recession. You don't want to do that. I mean, there's no better way to go broke than to throw up your hands, run around in circles like a chicken with his head cut off, and repeat the words, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, over and over again. By the same token, you don't want to be in denial about what's going on. You can opt out of participating in the recession and still acknowledge that it's there. I think rather than participate, you should adjust. The biggest adjustments are strategies, which we'll talk about later. But let's not talk about what to do. And just like what you said, Nathan, don't cut back on marketing. Mm -hmm. Now, you may want to look at how you can trim your marketing expenses, but don't reduce your activities. Find ways to make each marketing dollar do more work for you. Or if you're not in a dollar-based economy, and I know we have listeners, viewers, subscribers around the world, whatever your currency is, same thing. Euro, yen, I don't know, whatever your currency is. Don't panic. That's about the worst thing you can do. It's totally unnecessary and it's not going to help anyone or anything. 
take a deep breath, assess, decide, plan, keep going. Now, this one's important. It's in a way it's subtle, in a way it's kind of blatantly obvious. Do what you can to let potential customers and potential strategic partners, affiliate partners, know that you're still in business. Mm -hmm. Post value online if that's your thing. Post pictures of your family and your pets if that's your thing. But the last thing you want to do is for people to start asking each other, whatever happened to Bart? That would be, of course, if your name was Bart. And finally, and this is a unique challenge for your creativity, don't lower your quality of life more than you have to. I remember uh, right on the at the time the economy was melting down, 2008, 2009, Lehman Brothers was evaporating. Um, a guy I was, I was back in school then, silly moon, and a uh, guy I was in school with um, said, in all seriousness, well, today we only eat pork and beans, franks and beans. That's it. And it, it, it's like he he freaked out. He he immediately acted like there was no money, and, and he, he didn't have to. And he he was constantly whining and complaining and living in a compressed world, even after the recession passed. So don't lower your quality of life at all if you can find a way. Now, you may need to find cheaper ways to get do the same things. But refusing to go into poverty mode will keep your mindset moving towards continued accumulation of wealth. And that's a good thing, especially during a recession. Any thoughts on that? Any experiences you've had that correlate or even refute that? Exact same thing. Uh, for me, when 2019, end of 2019, that was like my best year in my business. And then everything got locked up in the lockdown and small businesses were shutting their doors. And I, of course, cater to small and medium sized businesses. My mindset totally made things worse for my business. The beginning of last year, I said, you know what? I might not be able to change what's going on, but I can change the way that I'm thinking about it. I can change the way that I'm acting because of it. And this last year in the middle of all of this craziness has been the best year that my business topped 2019, even when the economy was soaring in 2019. So, uh, it might be a little bit woo. It might be just human psychology, but mindset and how you react to things has a huge impact on where you go and how much energy you put into going there. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, and thanks for being that open about it. And before anybody listening to this or watching this gets too judgy, um, Nathan's experience is pretty universal. You got to do it wrong before you do it right. Um, you're not, unless you're brought up in a family that really focused on this stuff and practiced it congruently with what they said, and those families are rare, um, then uh, you have to learn this that way, the hard way. But anyway, thanks and thanks for sharing that because that is really how it works. Uh, of course, if you can skip the step of doing it wrong or you can accelerate that step, even better, but we all do that. All right. Let's jump into the recession fighting strategies. These are, they're strategic, but they're very tactical things. They're specific things you can do. The first one is stretch out where you can. And by stretch out, I am not talking about doing yoga. Nothing wrong with that, but that's not what I'm talking about. Look at how you can stretch out customer payments, especially for your higher end offers. And I'm gonna give you three options Disclaimer, I'm not a financial expert. I've used these things more as a consumer than as um, a business owner, although I have used them to some degree, but you need to check, you need to do your own research on them. First, first one, the easiest way to, to take um, one payment and stretch it out is to set up a series of recurring payments with your payment processor. If you have an app like One Shopping Card, or keep, which used to be called Infusionsoft, this is pretty easy to do. And if you can handle increasing the time to pay without increasing the price, without adding a surcharge on, 
now charging interest. That is, if you could take six payments of $100 instead of one payment of $600, that's the most attractive. At the end of six months, you'll find you have a lot more money in the bank. Of course, you know, you need to be able to handle it. Now, this is also the riskiest way to go, especially in the recession, because you are holding the bag. Um, customers may not end up making the last payments and then you're stuck. So a slightly more difficult to set up, but a, a lower risk or way to go is to sell with PayPal credit as your payment processor. People can buy anything over $99 on PayPal credit if their credit is good enough and stretch their own payments up to six months without paying any interest or fee, as long as they make a minimum payment each month and pay the whole thing off by the end of the six months. Now, one downside is sometimes, and I've experienced this and I've seen other reports, is sometimes it's a little hard to get all of your payments from PayPal right away, and they've been arbitrary about it. But the good part of this is you've transferred the responsibility for collecting the money um, from you to PayPal, and you get paid up front less the merchant fee, which you're going to have to pay in any case. Now, the hardest one to set up, but probably the lowest risk for you as a merchant, is a company like Affirm. Big Fortune 500 kind of company. Um, I know they service, they, you know, they have like Walmart on their website as one of their clients. What they do is they'll pay you up front and they'll handle the billing for you, sometimes with really small payments over longer period of time. I don't know what their fee is. I don't know how the whole thing works. Um, on some of the more expensive things I've bought, I've seen them as an option. I've never used them myself. Um, you need to do your own research and any details of these approaches, like I said, but they can increase your sales. And a firm says on its website, having a firm has shown an increase of 85% in average order value. Mm -hmm. So check out and See if any of these things work for you. Nathan, do you have any thoughts or experience, opinions about stretching out payments? Yeah, I think this is just good sense in any economy, giving people more options on how to pay and giving people the ability to pay in installments is always a good idea, but especially when people are more considerate of where each dollar is going. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's jump into recession fighting strategy number two. Make more offers to your existing customers. To give you a very technical definition, because sometimes people get this confused, an existing customer is someone who's bought from you, not someone on your list. That's a subscriber or a prospect, okay? So here's how I look at it. In a recession, especially since the media broadcasts news of the recession over and over, the general level of fear is higher and the general level of trust is lower. So let's examine this from the point of view of your prospects and customers. Who fears buying from you the most and trusts you the least? That would be someone who doesn't know you and especially who's never had a satisfying buying experience from you. On the other hand, who has comparatively less fear and much more trust? Same idea as the last one, but in reverse someone who's already bought from you and has had a satisfying experience. Most businesses are always chasing more new customers, and that's not necessarily a bad strategy, but it's an uphill struggle during a time of lowered trust and heightened fear. So what's easier and probably more profitable to focus on during a recession is the customers you already have. Give them exclusive high value content for free, recommend affiliate offers you know are good. Remember, because it's a recession, things have slowed down, they won't all make additional purchases right away, but if you stay in front of them, some of them will eventually. And instead of lowering your own prices, add high value bonuses that don't cost you much once you've created them. Any thoughts on selling to your own customers? We're, we're gonna get on a segment of your own customers in a second, but any thoughts just on this in general? Yeah. So for the last year or so, the only, there's no guarantees in advertising, but the only thing that's come close to a guarantee for myself and my clients is remarketing to people who have already bought 
and remarketing or marketing to a lookalike audience of people who have already bought. And with everything that's going on with iOS changes and Facebook and all of that stuff that's been going on, coupled with the way that the economy is going, we still do a little bit of lead generation ads. We still do a little bit of um, brand awareness advertising, but where most of our money has gone and where most of it is actually seeing a payoff is remarketing to people that are on our customer list and then targeting lookalike audiences of those exact same people. Okay. So I'm going to take a leap and say, you have been behaving as if we were already in a recession, which is not unreasonable or necessarily untrue. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's working. Okay, good. It is good. Okay. Thank you. So, Um, Let's go to recession fighting strategy number three. Put more focus on high value customers. Good times, bad times, it doesn't matter. There are some people who are always ready and able to spend when they see something they want. And I'm not just talking about the billionaires who live in San Francisco or just down the peninsula. People who don't get thrown off their game by a recession are everywhere. If you don't know what I'm talking about, read Thomas Stanley's book, The Millionaire Next Door, or Dan Kennedy's book, No BS Marketing to the Affluent. Now, it's not always possible to identify those people in your customer group, but one really good way is to figure out which customers buy the most from you. And we're going to have, this is a little teaser preview, we're going to have a guest on next week who will get into the nitty gritty of how to figure out who those people are. So mark that on your calendar. You really want to hear next week's podcast almost as much or possibly even more than this one. But here's the bottom line. These high value customers will keep buying from you no matter how bad the economy gets if you make it worth their while, okay? So that's strategy number three, market more and with more care to this special group. Do you have any um, particular thoughts about, you know, marketing to your best customers? No, I would just say that I highly recommend Dan Kennedy's No BS Marketing to affluent people. I think that was the name of the book. It was a game changer for me when I read that book. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty amazing book. Um, most of the stuff by Dan is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's wrap this up. We talked about what not to do and we covered three strategies you can follow that will help keep your business afloat, maybe even grow during a recession. And those strategies are stretch out where you can, make more offers to your existing customers and put more focus on high value customers. These are pretty specific and worth writing down and keeping in mind. Now let me zoom out a little and get to four bigger picture ideas to guide your thinking and your actions, especially during a recession. One, take on more of the risk. More important with new customers than existing customers, but find ways to make your offer as risk-free as humanly possible while still making business sense for you. An example would be one of our strategies, smaller payments over a longer period of time. Two, give more to get more. This is always a good idea and it works in any economic climate, but if you become more observably giving when most other people are becoming more increasingly stingy and frightened, this will move more of the market in your direction. Three, work harder to make your offer impossible to resist. Someone's got to work harder during recession. Might as well be you, since the rewards are plenty. And four, make it easier to do business with you. Always a good idea, but especially during a recession. Find anything that could be an obstacle in your funnel and overall sales process and replace it with something that makes it as easy as pie. I have one last thing to add, and I usually don't do this. It's something that we haven't quite finished the implementation for in one of my clients' businesses yet. 
And I usually don't like to talk about stuff until we've already seen results, but this is one thing that we're implementing. They sell a physical product and a lot of their new customers, they sell it to are not very confident in the in the journey that they're about to embark in with buying this product. And so what we're doing is we're putting together a course that walks them through the easiest way to get whatever it is that they're trying to do with the physical product accomplished. So when you buy the physical product, we also have a foolproof course that comes with it. Normally would be like $297, but you buy the $40 product and you get the course for free. Now you're not worried about confidence. You're not worried about wasting your $40 and you're getting a 200 and some dollar course for free with the $40 product. So you mentioned make it as valuable as possible. A, a, a digital course doesn't cost anything once it's up. You can give it out over and over again for free, but it increases the value and it helps overcome that lack of confidence that people have when they're buying a new product or when they're brand new to your product. So if you sell a physical product, consider educational material that comes as a bonus with it to help you get the most out of it. Again, we haven't implemented this yet. This is still theory for this particular business that I'm working with that we're doing it with. But in the past, in my own endeavors, it's always worked. And so at a time like now, I think that that might be if you have a physical product, giving some sort of educational material that helps people get the most out of that product might be something worth looking into. Yeah, that's a great strategy um, and perfect example, too, of, of adding more value. And yeah, I know creating a, a course, a digital course, if it's any good, takes a lot of time, a lot of work. And for your client, they're having to spend a lot of money. And um, But man, the way it will set you apart in the marketplace and make you the go-to company and in, increase repeat sales, and increase buzz. Yeah, great, great idea. And thanks for sharing it. And well, you know, we, we won't be on for about six weeks, so maybe it'll be done by then. Um, Maybe not, but uh, yeah, I know how long <laughs> yeah. David, take. you've produced courses before. You know that's <laughs> that might be asking too much. Yeah, it might 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 be um, might be a little while. I appreciate you putting this together. I know people do knock on mindset. People uh, kind of laugh at mindset sometimes, but I found that other things are important. But if you don't have a good mindset, and if you don't have the ability to keep a productive mindset in the middle of chaos, you're not going to weather storms like the one that we're going through right now. And it's a key thing. It's the differentiator between people that go under and people that stay afloat. Have you ever gotten in a car when someone's driving and they just have their hands like this and you say, what are you doing? They go, oh, steering wheels aren't important. In fact, they're just a bunch of woo-woo bullshit. Exactly. <laughs> yep. I'd get out of the car as fast as I could. Absolutely. All right, David, thank you again. I think this was, it maybe wasn't one of the most, uh, actually it was, there was a lot of practical value in this one as well, but it was definitely one of the, uh, I think more valuable mindset episodes that we've done so far. So I appreciate you putting, putting it together and bringing it to the audience. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. And if you enjoyed this episode and you want to check out more, you can go to copywriterspodcast.com. And until next time, we will catch you later. Catch you later.